We do run a bog tour here. Mm -hmm. It's one of the aspects of our business, and it's one of the things that I would like to talk about a little bit today, and how agriculture needs other things in order to sustain. Uh, my wife and I, this is our sole source of income, and we need we needed to do other things than just rely on the cranberry income. And one of the things that we looked at is ag tourism. Mm -hmm. And ag tourism, especially being here in the Cape, uh, it has been a, a, a great thing, it really has. There's a few things that I do want to mention, and again, the things that we're going to talk about in agriculture today not only affect cranberry growers in Cape Cod, but certainly uh, agriculturally related throughout the state of Massachusetts. I mean, uh, we have a lot of uh, a lot of help from the state, but uh, but we're also looking for a lot more, and uh, we believe that you know agriculture is a key part of the community. We ran a substantial beef and uh, pork operation where people would be would buy beef and pork from us, but because the state of the Massachusetts no longer has a certified USDA certified slaughterhouse, we had to shut that part of our production and our farm down, and it and it uh, it took a substantial bite out of us financially. But there are, there are others around. The there state are others home. around, and I, and I'll be as polite as possible to say that they don't they gotcha. don't they don't uh, meet up to my standards. And there's there's definitely no USDA approved slaughterhouse. There are others around, and I don't believe even they make the quality that the USDA demands in the slaughterhouse. And I need that if I'm going to resell the meat. We have this beautiful buy local and buy fresh campaign, and we have all these beautiful farmers markets that people want to establish and create in their towns but we need to remember we also have to support the guy that's going to grow the stuff and and make the land available for him to grow the stuff or, or her to grow the stuff or else you're not going yeah, to yeah else you're not going to get it we're actually putting the cart before the hoss in a sense because we have this great demand for farmers markets and we do have a bunch of people who want to be farmers and want to get involved in it but we got to provide them the opportunity and the resources to do that and it starts with land mm -hmm. it starts with land and and now, the other things fall in after that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, using you get hit with a lot of information at the state house. You can sit in a, the governor's office or in conference rooms, and I know the, the representatives feel the same way. When you've kind of walked it and seen it and heard it and talked to people like you know, uh, Leo, you, you, it becomes less abstract. It becomes real. So when you're making decisions, you, you're trying to. Uh, you know that the impact uh, one way or the other so it's just it's helpful so it's not uh, just this kind of abstract policy thing that you're talking about you understand how it's real for people and for communities uh, we put together a dairy task force look at what some of the other states you know ha have done in terms of trying to provide some level of assistance and uh, you know I think we've we've made a you know we've put into place some of those recommendations and a, a funding me mechanism that allows them to kind of get relief when things beyond their control take a dip and you know it wasn't it, it, you know as you go around the state clearly travel and tourism is a a big part of our um, economy but uh, part of that has to do with kind of scenic vistas and, and open space and our farms in addition to being an important food source also you know add to that and as we've just heard in the short time we've been here there are development pressures uh, cost pressures um, you know, on the dairy farm, one piece that that was interesting is that that came up is this talk about uh, you, you know uh, some of the you know pandemic flu and the p pandemic you know situations and states try to prepare for some of those. You know, there could be interruptions uh, in, in food chains and food ch food chain supplies, and why it is important to have a certain indigenous capacity to 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 provide and. Uh, one of the things in the dairy, I, I can't remember what the exact percentage was, but I know it was like 70 something percent of, of the milk that comes into Massachusetts comes, is it, uh, is it east, uh, west of the Mississippi, it was, which was kind of mind boggling. So, you know, milk having to travel across the country. Uh, so it's for a lot of reasons it made sense to do something. And, uh, you know, being here uh, allows us to see a, you know, a little different part of the agricultural uh, portfolio that the state has with the cranberry and that's <laughs> a, a, a crop uniquely identified with Massachusetts a part of our kind of tradition and culture and we want to make sure that we're understanding it and doing what we can to partner with with our you know colleagues in the legislature to, to, to help uh, wherever we can. I, I know Sarah's been here a number of times and, and 
there's, there's, I could talk to people, you know, don't blue in the face when we're sitting in an office, but when you come out and see it, 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 it is, it makes a huge difference, it really does. And, uh, and uh, I, I know, you know, speaking for the dairy guys with, through Farm Bureau, uh, it was great.